Hello, everyone. Claire Jones from Clarifications Coaching. This is the next video in a series where I go over some of the business tools and strategies that I use for both my clients and myself and my own business. And it's just an instructional video to show you how I do things. And today I'm going to go over my cash flow spreadsheet. Now, I created this myself and set up the formulas so that they add up the right things in the right spot at the right time. And I'm just going to go through it a little bit to show you how everything works. So a cash flow spreadsheet is a very vital business document where you go in and you put in your income and expenses, both past and expected for the next 12 months so that you have a good idea of what your cash balances are gonna be every month. So then you can plan ahead for big purchases or other kinds of expenses or income that's coming in. You can plan ahead. That's essentially what we're gonna do here is predict our cash flow into the future and be able to plan based on what the cash flow tells us. So this is kind of a guessing game, but if you have pre-existing um, documents and financial statements, it will be pretty easy to see what your average income is on a month to month basis and what your average expenses are on a month to month basis. So you're going to have to have access to either your QuickBooks account or your bookkeeper or however you track your financial statements. And the, you will be able to edit the categories yourself and set it up so that it works for you. And you'll get to see where your du du deductions are, where a lot of money is going every month. Maybe you want to, you know, spend less on your software services. Maybe you want to add more to your advertising budget. And this is the kind of spreadsheet that will help you determine those things and help you plan ahead for um, financial cash flow um, predictions. So I'm going to move my head over here so you can see all of the categories. So I have it set up so that it's month zero, month one, month two, month two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that gives me a good prediction as to what the next 12 months are going to look like for my business. And right now I have everything set at zero. So I'm going to go through this real fast and show you how everything adds up. And so on the side here, we have income and that can be sales, that can be personal contributions if you're funding the business yourself. And it can also be interest. If you get gain interest on your bank accounts or interest on investments, this is where you would um, put that down. And you can always edit these to make sure that they work for you. Maybe you wanna track how many sales are coming in from a certain arm of your business versus another arm. And you can break them down out in here and be able to track that. So you can edit it to work for you. And then for expenses, we have the general categories like advertising, promotional, bank charges, distributions or wages, insurance, licenses and permits, office expenses, software, professional fees, rent deposits, rent, taxes, telephone um, or internet if you're paying for internet. Um, travel and coffee expenses or miscellaneous. And these categories you can edit to suit your day monthly expenses as well. And it's just a way of tracking those categories so that you know how much is going to where. And then at the bottom here, we also have other cash out. So that means expenses that are more long-term expenses, and those are expenses that depreciate. And so that's more equipment and furniture purchases. So if you are buying, say, a work truck for your business, this is something that would go in this category because those kind of assets, those kind of business assets depreciate over the years because the truck is going to be worth less when you use it than when you bought it. And so there's a way to track that in your accounting to make sure that you're still not you're, you're getting the deductions you need, basically. Um, it goes into a little more further detail, but I'm not going to worry about that for today. So this is basically assets that depreciate for this category, and those are tracked a little differently. You just need to know that. And you can talk to your bookkeeper or your accountant to really explain that um, to you. And I'm going to silence my phone here real fast. And so they can explain to you what exactly that means if you have more questions about that. 
And then we have the total cash outflow, the ending cash position, and the ending cash balance. And these are all things that I have set up with um, um, formulas so that they automatically calculate. So I'm not reinventing the wheel each time. So, oops, I'm going to delete that. I didn't mean to do that. Undo whatever I just did because I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so now we're filling it out. So your beginning cash balance is the money that you start with. So maybe you are starting in the middle of a business and so you already know how much cash you have on hand at that moment. Maybe you're starting a new business, so you're starting at zero. Um, this is basically whatever you're starting out at. With. And it doesn't matter where you start, you just have to put that cash balance, that current cash balance in there so that it can track how that is affected by various income and expenses. So I'm going to start at zero because I'm going to assume that I'm starting a business and I'm going to have to put in some contributions in order to have money to spend in the business. So I'm going to put in maybe a thousand dollars because that's enough to get the business licenses, enough to get, you know, internet set up and all that jazz. So we have $1,000 coming in. And so this automatically calculate it, calculates it down here. It will just add these three boxes here and you will know that you have $1,000 of total income. Now, keep in mind that this does not include bank charges. So if you are getting sales and there are you know, percentages taken off by the payment processing company, that's something that would go into bank charges. So you would put the gross income in these boxes and then subtract those expenses like the um, percentages taken off the top by payment processors down here. Those go into expenses. So first, advertising promotional. So this can be anything like business cards, posters, you can pay for ads, you can pay for um, flyers, you can pay for um, networking groups. This is where I put my networking group expenses in there. So say that I just did about you know, 150 in Facebook ads to start out with just to get my name out there. So that's where I would put that. And as you see horizontally here, it also adds it up on each row as well so that you can see the year total of that particular category. So these will automatically populate as well. You can set up the formulas to do that. And to get you a little sneak peek, if you double click on it, you can see that that's basically just the sum of that row. And so it will automatically calculate that for you. And it's the same thing for here. It's the sum of that column. So that will be automatically populated. So you don't really want to mess around with those boxes because um, they kind of mess up the math that's happening. So bank charges, like I said, this is those percentages that get taken off the top by payment processors or um, processing fees, anything like that. And so since we didn't have any sales, I'm not going to put any bank charges in there because I'm assuming that we didn't get any processing fees because we didn't process any sales. Distribution wages, I'm not going to pay myself yet if it's my company. Um, it's just starting out, so I'm not going to put anything there. Insurance, that's kind of a once a year, maybe a couple times a year type of purchase. So I'm going to start out and do maybe like 150 for that as well, if, in case you're doing insurance. And that could be renter's insurance for your office space. That could be car insurance for the truck that you're purchasing. It could be, you know, any type of insurance that you're paying for in that um business. And then licenses and permits. This is especially important when you're starting out. And this is also a yearly, typically yearly expense. So I know that it takes around $200 to get all of your state, city, um, and federal licensing taken care of. So I'm going to put in 200 for that. Office expenses. This is computers, paper, pens, um, post-its, um, anything that you're using in the office pretty much. So I'm going to put another 150 there because I'm assuming that I'm buying, you know, some papers and pens and whatnot for my um, burgeoning business. And then software, this is where I put website um, subscription fees or um, QuickBooks subscription fees, 
any kind of software that you use to run your business. This is could be also, you know, if you buy an office pack for your Windows computer, this could be one of the software expenses. And you can kind of decide what expenses go in what categories. Maybe buying office for your Windows computer is more of an office expense to you. But I would categorize it as software just to, you know, keep things simple. So I'm going to assume we're paying another maybe 150 on um, stuff. professional fees. This is anything like lawyer fees, accountant fees. Um, I've even put stylist fees because I had to get um, hire a stylist for some branding photos. Um, so I put that cost in the professional fees category, photographer fees, anything you consider like paying another professional in order to help in your business. And this is a little different from wages because they aren't contractors. You're not setting up a 1099 for them. This is just someone that you're paying for, you know, one time or a couple times use, like an accountant or a lawyer or something like that. So I'm going to assume that we're not paying any of that right now. And then the rent deposit is probably going to be um, around $1,000. And as you can see, we're going to start in the red. And so this is something that you can use um, credit for if you want or a loan for or something or you can just um, you know make sure you make that back in sales in the next month and then um, rent I'm going to do another thousand dollars for that um, so maybe I want to make my starting up contribution a little higher maybe I want to do three thousand to start out as a good chunk of money so that I can make sure that I have enough cash on hand and I'm not starting out in the red. So going back to taxes, this is something that's going to be a yearly and or quarterly expense, depending on what your tax schedule is like for your business. So I'm not going to put anything in there for now because we're not paying taxes yet because we're not making any sales yet. Um, telephone usually costs around $100 to set it up as well as um, buy the equipment and all that jazz. Um, travel and coffee, I haven't spent anything. Miscellaneous, I haven't spent anything. So as you can see, it's added up our total expenses at around $2,900 to start out. And this is a good way to kind of predict what your startup expenses are going to be. If you know that you're gonna spend these this much on these categories just to get the business going, then you'll know how much to contribute to the business as startup funds or how much to get the loan for or how much to you know, borrow from your parents, <laughs> however you're funding your business. Um, and so this is a good way to predict how that cash flow is going to play out so that you can plan ahead and make sure that you have enough money on hand to get you through the first six to 12 months of business. So we'll scroll down here. Equipment and furniture purchases. I'm not going to put anything in here um, yet. I'm just going to leave that blank. And so you can see it's calculated the total cash outflow, which is $2,900. And so the ending cash position is $100 because we put in 3000 and we spent 2900 So that means we have 100 left. So that means our ending cash balance is $100. And so at the top here in month one, you'll see that this box populates automatically from the number of the ending cash balance of the previous month. So you don't have to scroll up and down and look like, oh, you know, so that will automatically populate as well. And then so for the first month of business, I'm going to say that we made $1,000 in sales and we contributed maybe another 300 because we know that there's going to be, um, you know, expenses that come up and stuff like that. So I'm going to put in some interest. Maybe you're only getting one cent a month, something like that. So that will automatically add again in this box. So you have $1,300.01 of total income for the month of December, that first month of business. And then we're going to go into the expenses. So maybe we're going to do another 150 on Facebook ads. Now that we're making sales, we're going to do some bank charges. So this is where you can use some formulas of your own as well. So you use the equal sign to do a formula. And if you know that your bank charges are going to be 2.9% of your income, you can easily just do 0 0.029 
times whatever this income is. So this box right here, which is $1,000. So then we'll know that the 2.9% of $1,000 is going to be around $29 for that bank charges. Or you can add it up manually if you can see what the what percentage they took out, out of the sales amount, whatever pro payment processor you're using. But I like to make it easy on myself when I'm predicting. And so I just do the um, 0 0.29 times the sales box to make sure that that um, calculates it for me. And you have to make sure that you put the equal sign to make sure that the formula goes through. So um, distributions, wages, I'm not going to pay myself yet in this business because I know that um, I have, you know, maybe five months worth of savings in my bank account. So I know I can live off of that for a little while without taking any money out of the business yet. So I'm going to leave that blank. Insurance is a yearly cost, so I'm not going to put anything there. Licenses and permits, also a yearly cost, so I'm not going to put anything there. Office expenses, maybe I need some more shit, so I'm going to put in some $100 for office expenses. Software, I'm going to assume is going to be around 80 bucks, so maybe not as much as it costs to set everything up, but there are some recurring costs like website fees, um, QuickBooks fees, any kinds of um, subscriptions that you use to run your business. Professional fees, um, I'm, maybe I need some photography done, so I'm going to put in some $300 for photography. I need product photography, brand photography, something like that, so I'll put there. The rent deposit is a one-time fee, so I'm not going to put anything there. Rent, however, is a monthly fee, so I'm going to put in $1,000 for that. And then taxes, we haven't paid anything yet because it's not the quarterly tax season. Telephone, I'm going to put around $30 because... $50 maybe, because that's typically what a landline costs around. Um, and I'll, I'll know for sure based on whatever, you know, telephone bill that I get, I'll have a good idea of what my monthly cost of that is going to be. Um, travel and coffee, miscellaneous, I'm going to leave those blank as well. So you can see that it also automatically populates it in the total expenses down here. It's 1709 is what we spent for this month. And so I'm still not going to buy any equipment or furniture purchases. And so the total cash flat outflow is going to be 1709. So that means that we lost 408.99 to this month out of the, we spent more than we brought in. So that's what it's trying to tell us. So it will um, automatically um, calculate this. Hold on, I did something wrong here. Um, it should delete this from the previous one. So I'm going to edit that formula real fast. So ideally, the ending cash balance is going to be this plus this, whatever the cash outflow is. So I'm going to do an equal sign again, hit this box, hit the plus sign, and hit this box. Because we started with $100, we are now at $308.99 because we spent $408.99. So you can see, and if you want to copy this formula across the board, then you can just hit this small little box in the bottom right hand corner and drag it across so that that formula is replicated in each of these boxes according to those columns. So I don't have to worry about redoing that formula again. So we ended in the red because we didn't make enough sales. That's basically what we're saying. So in month two, the second month worth of business, we're ending in the we're starting in the red. So we have to make sure that we make enough sales to make up for that. So maybe the second month we make 2000 in sales, you know, a little more than previously. And we're going to add a little bit more money just to make sure that things are going. And we're going to add a little bit more interest. So maybe we make two cents in interest this month. So you can see that all of these numbers are changing according to the numbers that I'm putting in here. So you can see like it will automatically tell you, you know, where these formulas are going. 
So next, I'm going to just assume that I'm going to do 150 in advertising and promotional for the rest of the year. So I'm going to do the same thing and just drag it across just to populate all of those boxes. And now that we're getting into the prediction aspect of it, you can kind of predict what your um, charges and expenses and income are going to be. So I'm going to drag this across too and populate that. And so this is the formula that we did for the bank charges, remember, 0 0.029 times the sales box. And it will replicate it in this one as well, if I can. So you can see it's D7 instead of um, C7 this time around. And then next it's E7 and so on and so forth. And so this is kind of when we can start playing around with our monthly charges. So maybe we're planning on just steadily increasing our income for the rest of the year. So I'll just add, you know, a thousand each month. Hopefully we can get up to those sales. 9,000, 10,000, and 11,000. Or you could say, like, maybe the month of August is a slow month for you. So you're going to keep that one at maybe 3,000 instead of 9,000. So if you know that your business is seasonal, then you can look ahead and say, like, oh, well, I know in August it's always going to be a slow month because everyone's on vacation. Maybe you're a service-based business. And so I'm just going to plan ahead for that month to be a slow month. So you can see that you know, it's not going to make or break you and you can plan for it accordingly. So I'm going to do the same with insurance. I'm just going to drag it over or interest. Sorry, I'm going to drag it over. And I'm going to assume that I'm not going to do any more contributions for the rest of the year. But maybe in the month of August, because I know it's a slow month, I'm going to plan on adding $500 just to give us a little bit of a buffer. So this is where you can kind of play around and try to predict what's going to happen. So you can reasonably with these predictions, see, you know, what your income total for the year is, what your contribution total for the year is, what your interest total for the year is, and then total income for the year. So I'm going to go back down to expenses and we were working on bank charges here. And so I pulled them across. And so you can see here, now that I've populated the sales boxes, the bank charges can automatically populate as well because it's a formula that pulls from the sales box. And so you can see that because we're making $8,000 in sales, we're probably going to spend around two thirty-two dollars in bank charges that month if they're going to continue the 2.9% on the processing fees. So that's something we can reasonably predict as well. And I'm going to start on distributions and wages. So maybe I want to start paying myself once we hit $5,000 in revenue, which will be month five for April. So I'm going to start out slow. Maybe I'll pay myself $500 next month, maybe $500 next month, maybe $500. Then I'll bump it up $600, you know, $700. But I know August is going to be well slow, so I'll not do any for that month. I'll just put a zero. And then, you know, September is good again, so I'll do 600. And then maybe by the end of the year, I can do 800. And so this is how you can plan ahead, you know, how much you need in your savings in order to make it through the first year of business, because that's key. A lot of businesses fail because they don't know how much money they're going to spend in the first year or how much their money they're going to get in the first year. And they don't plan ahead financially in order to cover their own personal expenses to make sure that they're not relying too heavily on the new business's income for money. So insurance is going to be a one year um, kind of deal. So maybe in November, again, I'll pay another 150. And then licenses and permits, same thing. I'm going to do another $200 in November because I know it's a yearly thing. Office expenses, I'm going to keep around $50 a month just because I know I'll probably be buying something along the way. And I'm going to drag that across so that it populates 50 across the board there. Software, I know I'm going to be paying $80 a month for the year so I can drag that across. Professional fees, I might, you know... Because I know taxes are going to come up and I know I'm going to have to pay an accountant probably sometime in 
February or March, depending on how early you'd happen to do your taxes. And I know it's going to cost me about $400 to pay the accountant. So I'm just going to put it in there because I know that that's an upcoming expense and I know I can plan for it. So maybe again in, you know, September, I'll pay another, you know, $300 for photography or something like that. Just kind of guess what you're going to pay ahead of time. Rent deposit is a one-time thing. Rent, however, repeats every month. So I'm going to drag that over to populate for a thousand across the board. Taxes are quarterly. So if I started in, um, I'm probably going to pay, I think it's January, April, um, July, and I, no, that's not right. May and September, I believe. No, something like that. I'm just going to guess. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head. Um, taxes. So you're probably going to be paying some, um, let's guess that you're a service-based based business, not a retail-based business. We'll not get into sales tax, but you're paying a B&O tax every quarter for service-based businesses, or at least in the state of Washington. So I'm going to guess that we're going to pay yeah, 100 for the first quarter, maybe um, 200 for the second quarter. And then maybe 400 for the third quarter. And then again, maybe 400 for the other quarter. So I'm just going to guess. And this is like an estimate that you can keep on hand. I have another spreadsheet for that to kind of estimate what your um, at least self-employment taxes are going to be if you are considered self-employed in your business. Um, that's another video for another time though. So you can guess at this or ask your accountant or book, bookkeeper, bookkeeper to guesstimate for you. And I know it's going to cost me $50 a month for a telephone. So I'm just going to drag that across if I can grab that. So that automatically populates and then travel and coffee. Maybe I'm going to start spending around 10 bucks a month for, you know, coffee dates or, um, parking, you know, whatever. And then miscellaneous, maybe every couple months I'll have 80 here or 100 here or maybe 150 here. Um, so you can just kind of put that in guesstimating. And then maybe later on I'm going to buy, you know, a desk. So I'll put in, you know, $200 for some furniture. Maybe I'll put in some, um, you know, whatever, $500 for something else. That's all a groovy. So I'm going to unitalicize these because they shouldn't be italicized. Okay. All right. So you can see at the bottom here, it's calculating all of those numbers that we put in. So you can see at the top, total income, it's automatically calculated here. Down here, total expenses, it's automatically calculated. Total other, all of these equipment and furniture purchases. And then total cash outflow, which is basically the other plus the total expenses over here. And then for the ending cash positions, that's how much you gained or lost on the month. And then it will add or subtract that to your ending cash balance. So I'm going to make these a little bit wider so that we can see those numbers there because they weren't big enough before. So you can see that you're going to end the year on a pretty good note because you're not really spending that much in expenses. So you're going to have, you know, around $44,000 left over by the end of the year. And so that's $44,000 is what's going to be populated at your beginning cash balance on your next cash flow spreadsheet. And this is something that you should update monthly and yearly and probably quarterly as well, just to make sure that you're still on track with your estimates and update things if you need to. So I set it as a task for the beginning of every month and I go over the previous month's income and expenses and update my estimates here to make sure that they are still still accurate, essentially. And this is where you can put in, you know, exact amount of back bank charges or exact amount of the, um, you know, software or office expenses or travel expenses so that you can have a good idea of what is actually happening. So that's pretty much the cash flow spreadsheet. So what I'm doing today is I'm actually offering this spreadsheet on sale to people and you can just have the spreadsheet, download it yourself and fill it in yourself with all of the right formulas and stuff like that. 
And I'm doing this because I've reached 400 followers on Instagram. Woohoo! I'm so happy. So I'm offering a $3.99 discount because typically these kinds of resources and spreadsheets would be $7.99. And so I'm offering it today for $4 to celebrate getting 400 followers. So if you're interested in getting this spreadsheet and filling it out yourself, um, feel free to buy it for $4 today. The discount code is 400, no spaces, spelled out with 400, F-O-U-R-H-U-N-D-R-E-D. And yeah, so if this is something you're interested, hit me up, let me know. I will zero all of this out for you so that you don't have all of these numbers to confuse you. And it will already have all of the formulas and stuff in there. So just make sure you don't mess with those. And if you do, just hit me up and I'll help you figure it out. <laughs> I'm here to help you. So that's it for today. If you can, please follow me on Facebook because that's where I post all of these juicy resource videos, as well as on Instagram. I'm trying to create different content for the different platforms with a little crossover based on the post. And you can also follow me on YouTube if you want other kind of videos. And that's it. So I love you all. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.